Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the challenges of free offenders, challenges of uh, ex-offenders, I'm sorry, re-entering the uh, free world. And of course we have here to uh, talk about uh, some of the problems that individuals who have been incarcerated face once they are paroled uh, for whatever reason, having an opportunity to come back into uh, society, uh, is Reverend Pastor Kevin Walker. Uh, Reverend Walker is the founder of the organization, uh, the Hands of God Ministry. And of course, uh, Reverend Walker, let me uh, welcome you to uh, the show this morning. Well, I'm glad to be here, Dr. Haynes. It's a pleasure to be here again talking to you once again about some things I consider to be very important. Well, I tell you, one, I, I believe, uh, Reverend Walker, that about the best information that we have dealing with uh, uh, incarceration and et cetera will come from you because you've given us so much information and in a, in a real sense uh, have uh, enlightened us mm -hmm. about a lot of things that are going on and have gone on in the uh, system of incarceration. Let's have you, uh, Pastor Walker, to uh, start us off today <coughs> by talking about your background, mm -hmm. uh, your education, and some of the things that were important in your life, and then we'll talk about some of the problems and some of the challenges okay. that people who have been uh, incarcerated face once they attempt to come back into society. Okay. Well, I was born here in Nashville, Tennessee, born of two good, hardworking parents. Um, one of my father is now deceased, and I was uh, educated in the public school system of, of Tennessee. Did not graduate from high school, actually ended up going into the Navy, mm -hmm. coming out of the Navy, got a o, uh, GED through OIC, mm -hmm. spent a little time in, uh, at Tennessee State University, mm -hmm. of course, didn't graduate from there either. Uh, ended up incarcerated in the prison system, did a little college in, in prison as well, mm -hmm. but basically, and never never got a degree in any, anything, uh, but that brings me, you know, to where I am today. Mm -hmm. All of those life experiences uh, have led to me, led me to where I am right now mm -hmm. in life today. I am currently the uh, founder and the president, CEO, pastor, senior servant of the uh, <laughs> Hands of God Ministries, which mm -hmm. consists of the Hands of God Christian Church and the Hands of God Recovery Ministries, and we're located in East Nashville on Woodland Street. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we have five houses, recovery mm -hmm. houses, and our primary purpose is to assist people who are basically uh, down on their luck, people mm -hmm. that are on drugs and alcohol, people that uh, the the society is looked down upon mm -hmm. as being rejects I would say and especially those coming out of the prison system mm -hmm. this is what we're doing mm -hmm. you know when you talk about uh, re-entry uh, uh, you've got five houses and I would imagine that most of them deal with individuals who uh, uh, have been incarcerated right. and have come out and so you've got quite a bit of experience dealing with this whole issue or uh, what you consider to be the challenges of uh, coming back into society if you had, <coughs> excuse me, to, ex uh, to explain to our audience this morning some of these challenges, what would you say would probably be the greatest challenge that individuals who've been incarcerated have to face? The biggest, the biggest issue that I'm dealing with right now with people coming out of the system would be the fact that they're coming out without any kind of identification. Mm -hmm. That's one of the big issues right now mm -hmm. because you take an individual that's been paroled mm -hmm. and then they come back into society, mm -hmm. then they come in with no identification mm -hmm. and now technically if the if a law enforcement officer stop one of these individuals mm -hmm. and 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 they find out that they don't have an identification, they can hold them in jail for 72 mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. Now technically that would be a violation because it's an arrest and mm -hmm. they could very well end back up in the system mm -hmm. but it's, it's amazing to me, Dr. Haney, how that the state, you can be in state custody, mm -hmm. but yet you can't leave state custody with a state identification mm -hmm. card. Mm -hmm. Now, let me add this, though, that I have met with the Assistant Commissioner of Rehabilitative Services, mm -hmm. and they are working to solve that problem mm -hmm. right now. So hopefully that's going to be a non-issue uh, mm -hmm. after a while. But right now it's a very big issue. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it seems to be a, 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 a very, very important issue because it seems that the state of Tennessee ought to be able to uh, recognize individuals who are going back and recognize the importance. And when you talk about identifications, you're talking about driver's license? Uh, well, uh, no, well, not necessarily driver's license, but the, uh, if they have driver's license, mm -hmm. of course, they can have you know, the renewal process while they're incarcerated, mm -hmm. but mainly the photo ID. Mm -hmm. If they can get the photo ID, which is basically a sheet of paper that's saying, okay, this guy's been in here or this woman's been in here mm -hmm. for the last 10, 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. we know who they are. Mm -hmm. Take this piece of paper, go down mm -hmm. to the uh, Highway Patrol Officer, wherever you get the license mm -hmm. or the ID, 
and say this is the document that identifies me as this person right here mm -hmm. and then should be able to get the you know get it from there mm -hmm. with no cost to the state I'm mm -hmm. not saying the state needs to pay for it would be ideal if they mm -hmm. did but mm -hmm. if they don't want to do that then at least give them something that says I can get my ID for the eight or the twelve dollars mm -hmm. that would have cost mm -hmm. to get it and, and, and of course we're getting ready for our first uh, uh, break here uh, Pastor Walker but uh, it, it, it does seem to me that this ought to be a non-issue you see because yeah, these individuals absolutely. have been incarcerated and now they are out and yeah. uh, the state ought to recognize that absolutely. they have to be identified yeah. and they ought to be willing to supply that identification and of course we'll be back uh, following this very, very short commercial break the issue